abstract thoughts and sometimes just talking about it helps me develop the idea a little bit easier. And I was telling somebody this story this morning as we were talking about what's going on in Ukraine and Russia bombing the capital today, that bridge blowing up. And, you know, I, I hit this dude with uh, this concept and he, you know, went silent for a minute and then he was like, oh. And let me give you the best analogy that I can. You know, I was, you know, training boxing. I mean, people have seen this before. It doesn't matter if you've trained or not. I'll just give you the scenario. You got, you know, some young kid that's new to boxing or MMA and they're sparring with, you know, somebody, maybe a coach. And the coach isn't, you know, they're trying to coach. They're trying to train. So they're not really trying to get their shots in. It's, uh, it's a, they're trying to help you learn. And then, you know, young buck over here decides he starts getting confident and cocky. Punches get a little harder. You know, everything just gets more aggressive, more aggressive. And the coach takes it coach takes it takes it a little more and then sooner or later the coach will hit that kid with a three-piece now even a two-piece you know pop 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 and then the you know your kid's phased and you had to remind them of who you're messing with and if you you know been in sports you've seen that similar scenario happen many times where someone just gets really cocky and then someone's got to teach them a lesson in a weird way, that's my analogy for what is going on in the war right now. And I think it's a very unique position for Ukraine, right? It's if you have to fight back, right? It's your country's under attack. You have to fight back. But in a weird way, if you fight back too much, Russia's sitting over here with the nukes. And at any given time they could just level your country. And that's my analogy to at any given time that coach could just hit you with the three piece and lay you out and there's nothing you're going to do about it. And what a strange position position to be in where you have to keep defending your country, but if you defend it too much, you might get bombarded all to hell with nuclear weapons and this thing seems to be escalating, right? With the pipeline getting blown up. They came out, and I thought I heard on a radio or somewhere on one of the news sites that um, the, even the U.S. came out and said someone's daughter was killed in uh, in Russia, and they, I think they came out and said you know someone in you know Ukraine did it, and now they're saying that you know Ukraine blew up that bridge going to was it Crimea? If I'm even saying it right. And, you you know, the mi missiles rained down on the Capitol today because of that. And it's, I understand why they're probably picking these targets. But are they going to get to the point to where Putin's just going to say, all right. And he's going to start, you know, we're going to get closer and closer to nuclear war. Which nobody on this planet wants. We all hope that we get through this life and you know our children's lives and their children's lives without ever having to see that hell but it just seems like i don't know how we get out of this mess like where's the off ramp at this point there are no golden pair parachutes for putin right now and it, eventually if you push too far he's got his finger on that button and i just if they really did find out that that assassination was Ukraine and it sounds like they already know that bridge, like I understand why you're doing it, but it's like, at, at what, what's the, what's the tipping point? Yeah, that's a good book. If you think about it, the tipping point book, where's the tipping point of how much you can fight back or where you can fight back. And you, can you take the war to Russia, like cross the border? Like we're, we're in the, the other country fighting back or trying to cause damage. At what point does Russia say, all right, boop, I'm going to hit the red button. And I think we've gotten close to this, even with just the weapons that we've provided, right? It's, you look at it, what's going on in the world right now, and it's like you don't see de-escalation. It looks like, you know, with the pipeline blowing up and all these other things, 
It's almost like we don't want the war to end. It's, there's no... At least in the United States, anyways, it doesn't seem like anyone's talking about how to end this thing, how to get it over with. It's it's kind of scary at some sometimes when you look at and you re- read the news headlines and the decisions we're making. And, and I get it. Somewhere in the U.S., the strategists had this theory of let's uh, let's weaken Russia, let's wear them down to a nub, and then it's like well, then you got China over here, and all of a sudden OPEC's cutting barrels and North Korea's you know firing missiles off and uh, they like were charging 12 planes toward the South Korean border. I mean, if you look at like the wars in history, would it be that surprising to you if you saw some countries in the Middle East, Russia, China, and North Korea all kind of you know teaming up again? There's just too much static going on right now for anyone to feel comfortable. And again, it's just, you know, I saw that bridge blowing up. It's like, man, that's going to, that's not going to probably get us to nuclear war, but he's going to rain down missiles on your ass again. And you got to sit back and say, well, was that worth it? And what an interesting position to be in where you have to fight back, but you got to kind of pick and choose your battles of where you fight back and how you fight back. Um, What a crappy position to be in. And how do you win that right now? It's like... You can't just let them roll over and take you over, but then you got to like push as far as you can without getting like annihilated and having the entire country wiped out. Or, you know, starting World War III where who knows how much carnage that's going to cause. But anyway, that was my like weird abstract thought of trying to have an analogy to how I see this war right now where, you know, it's... Do you get to the point where you become the cocky kid and you're punching too hard or taking those dome shots and then, you know, the coach just hits you with the three-piece and, and you're shook? Is Russia going to do that at some point where if they're losing ground, you piss them off, you, you just go too far? Which, I mean, can you really go too far when you're defending your country? That's the crazy part, right? Can you really go too far? But it's weird, like the rules of the game right now is just weird because they're sitting over there with like the largest nuclear arsenal in the world. Like, what do you do? Um, I just hope we find an off ramp. I hope we find a way where Putin can, where Ukraine can, you know, have their country back and Putin can find a way to save face, to back off. And I just, I'm afraid I don't see anyone in the world saying, hey, Let's try to find a way to end this. It's just, let's send more weapons, send more weapons, send more weapons. It's, man, it does seem like we just like war. And, man, if if we're not at war, what are we doing? Ain't nothing makes sense. But, uh, what are your thoughts on this? If you're Ukraine, it's, do you just go all the way and then if you get bombed, you get bombed? Do you, do you be selective? Do you back off? I mean, what is the strategy right now? I mean, it's, it's like what I do for a living. It's like I look at stuff and you try to synthesize the information you have. And you think about, you know, what would you do? How could you or how would you win this thing? Or if you can't win, how do you not, how do you lose the least? You know, if you got any wartime strategies here, drop a comment below.